Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, a meteorologist, DT, from weatherist.com, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe, the commander of chaos. Let's talk about This Week in Weather, and uh, lots to talk about in this issue. Uh, we'll talk about a review of the uh, December 8th to 9th minor to, I don't know, moderate snowstorm here for uh, the Mid-Atlantic and New England, more significant snowstorm relative to normal over the Deep South. Uh, we'll talk about the December 12th and 13th event um, over the interior of New England, which is coming up here a couple days. So a minor snow event for uh, Maryland, Virginia, Delaware on December 14th and 15th. Talk about an Arctic blast coming in and then maybe another Arctic blast uh, around Christmas time after a brief warm-up. So let's get right started. Uh, just a reminder here. Uh, let's see, this uh, is from the uh, Facebook page, and uh, we were talking about the, de I committed to the uh, December 8th and 9th snowstorm back on December 3rd, and I just wanted to point it out to you. This is the actual snowfall map from NWS, and you can see it extends all the way down into Georgia and Alabama. Uh, the yellow areas represent snow amounts of 8 to 12 inches. Um, the uh, light yellow areas are uh, 6 to 8 inches, and the... Um, and the dark blue areas are four to six inch snows. So you can see there were significant snows in some areas. And if we uh, look at, you can also, there's another range here. Again, you can see a pretty good range. See the purple as snows in here, that's 10, 12 inches. The dark blues in here, that's around uh, five, six inches and so on and so forth. So it was a pretty good snow. Uh, this is from the Eastern region, US, and you can see uh, the, where the good snows fell. Um, uh, New York City got kind of ripped off here a little bit, uh, all LaGuardia. Uh, Philly only 1.3, but uh, again, they, the problem is that the initial burst of snow missed them. It fell apart. The one that went through uh, North Carolina, Virginia on Friday evening, so they didn't get much on Saturday. Richmond, Virginia, 3.5. There were some areas at 4 or 5 in and around central Virginia. Uh, and across the mountains of North Carolina, got hammered, you can see. Salisbury, Maryland, big, pretty big winter, 7 inches. Uh, Sheffield, uh, North Carolina, good uh, wind. Westminster at 6 inches, that was pretty good. Manchester, Virginia, that's actually southern Richmond, 5.5. So again, you can see Damascus and up there by D.C. So all in all, it was a decent snow event, not a big deal, but it was the first one of the season, getting uh, kind of early in the season. And then also the other event I've been talking about, this was back from... Um, November 17th, actually, believe it or not, I was talking about the potential for something on December 12th and 13th and 14th. So, and then again, I talked about it on December 7th when the European ensembles were quite bullish on this event um, and uh, showed it uh, developing quite nicely. So uh, that event is still coming along. Now, what happens here, this is the upper air pattern, and you can, this is valid as of uh, Tuesday afternoon. And you can see the severe negative tilt here. Uh, on the axis like that. You see how it's tilted down, so the piece of energy is like this and develops low pressure in this area. You can see our ridge here very nicely, another weak disturbance here. And uh, notice that the uh, NAO here is actually neutral. It's not negative at all. And that's one of the problems with the pattern here. We're not getting a very strong negative NAO in this pattern, at least not so far. Um, and then this is 84 hours. This is a Wednesday night. And you can see that disturbance here, which you talked about Again, which is the disturbance right about here. And now and it closes off into a, a series of storm here. You can see the closed off low uh, very uh, nicely uh, in this area right here. And uh, we have a, a pretty big storm over Maine and southeastern Canada. And if you look at the overall pattern, uh, you know, the, uh, it may be some sort of weak disturbance here. Nice ridge on the west coast, still pull, pulling on the cold air. The NAO is uh, neutral at best. You know, still an Eastern Pacific oscillation, still a cold pattern. And here's the actual development. This is the European model as of 60 hours. And what happens is that the low, you know, comes out this way. And you can see it comes in this direction. So what happens is it pulls up a lot of warm air. So Jersey and New York, southern Connecticut, uh, southeast of Massachusetts get all above freezing uh, 40, 42 degrees and things warm up. And that's why they don't get a lot of um, snow there and you can see this looking look at 51 hours a little before that this is tuesday morning again we have a coast low developing here but it develops way too late this is the primary low and as a result you have uh, pulling up south southerly winds and again this is your 32 degree line and while the 850 temperature technically you can see that let me clear this out you can see it you can see the blue line 
So if you look at the zero line, you go, oh, well, it's going to snow in New York City or Connecticut. Well, there's the line here. But the problem is the low level temperatures are much warmer. New York City is 40 degrees. Uh, Bridgeport is 46. Uh, uh, Providence is 43. Boston is 45. Come on, that's not snow. And you can see the warmer surging up into this direction. So as a result, you know, the models are reflecting this very nicely. They're not, they're, it's, it's pretty obvious that those are, aren't going to see snow. This is the European model from Sunday afternoon. Uh, and you can see this uh, very nicely here. And uh, it has moderate snow over Connecticut, uh, uh, northwest Connecticut, western Massachusetts, several inches of snow in upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire. But this is not the Coachera. And if we look at the Coachera, we'll see much heavier snow. Now, in the previous event, a lot of people noticed that the Coachera event uh, or, uh, algorithm for making a snow forecast had less snow. Well, how come the snow here is enhanced on this Coachera, right? Why is it this one? Because here, you're dealing with Arctic air. So the snow algorithm does a better job, and as a result, you have much heavier snow in this area and in this area. And you can all in here. So as a result, a lot of 12-inch uh, snowfalls over in western New York State, northern New York State, Vermont, New Hampshire, much of Maine. Notice that inland on the coast here, maybe a little bit of a precinct here, but this is mostly rain, folks, because of that south wind coming up in that direction. So this is the uh, GFS. Also, the regular uh, model through 72 hours showing some decent snow. But if you look at the Coachera, boom, snow mounts are going up. Again, because we're dealing with Arctic air. This is the GFS ensemble. Boom. Notice again, Boston rain, New York City rain, Southern Connecticut rain, Mass Cape Cod, Rhode Island rain, New York City rain, New Jersey rain. So all the snow is in the interior. So like I said, interior New England snowstorm, that's what this looks like to me. And this is my first guess map. I'll be making an update on it tomorrow morning, but you can see, you know, I'm actually a little aggressive with the snow in some areas when you think about it. All right beyond this event 72 hours uh wednesday uh wednesday morning all right so the low pressure area is uh general is now up in this area in maine right so we're getting this really big circulation of cold air coming southward you can see the sub-zero temperatures being southward being pulled south single digits in new york state uh, uh near near 10 degrees and much of uh, western and central pennsylvania western maryland um eastern portions of West Virginia, Shendo Valley is all in the teens, all the way down into the western North Carolina mountains, and 20s over much of uh, the Delmarva and Virginia away from the mountains. So it's a cold morning on the 13th, there's no doubt about that. And on the 14th, again, another pretty cold morning. Look at the sub-zero temperatures there up here. A lot of cold air up there in single digits. So uh, now one of the reasons why the cold air doesn't get down any further south is because there is a low pressure area right in here, which is coming through, and that's going to bring up maybe a period of snow to portions of Virginia, Maryland, and Delaware. All right, now 132 hours out, there's our dis second disturbance, like, which may bring that light, light snow to the middle, lower middle Atlantic states, Virginia, Maryland, North Carolina, uh, Delaware. It's a little disturbance right in here. All right, notice the ridge now is getting destroyed. We're getting hit by a Pacific jet. So the ridge here is beginning to weaken. So you get this one little disturbance blowing on through, and then the pattern begins to warm up a little bit. And it may do this. There's the snow in the European model, you know, an inch or two, inch, half inch. Not a big deal, but something on the 13th. And then after that, it begins to warm up. Now, here are the 850 temperatures. Uh, no, these are the um, uh, surface temperatures the next five days. And you can see it's pretty cold east of the Mississippi River. There's the Mississippi River. Oops. Here's the Mississippi River right here. You can see it. So everything east of it's cold. Everything here is quite warm. And as we progress in time, this, these are the 850 temperatures. That's really cold east of Mississippi. Very cold temperatures, quite impressive. Now, on Saturday, after they, that low moves through on the 14th or 15th, here comes the cold air again. That low moves off the coast. That was, goes through here, off the coast, intensifies, and pulls down the cold air. And Virginia and Maryland and West Virginia back on the cold air, as is Pennsylvania and New England as well. Now, further out in time, this is a week from today, December 17th, and the pattern has broken down significantly. A couple things you're going to notice. First, we have a little bit of southeast ridge over the Cuba. That's not a big deal. Uh, but the, remember that ridge on the west coast? No, we've got a trough here in Alaska, and you're getting a howling Pacific jet coming in here, which means mild air. So we do have a trough here, but uh, the polar vortex is fairly far to the north. It's a broad trough, and has, there's no flow of cold air. It's Pacific air coming in. So the temperatures begin to warm up, and we'll see that in just a minute. 
here are the temperatures at uh, for the 18th notice the eastern third of the country is now near normal about a degree above normal very warm over the plain states in south central canada relative to normal and all the cold air is locked up in canada this is the uh, forecast these are uh, max temperatures here for the 18th of december look at the 50s in virginia uh, and 60s in north carolina tennessee so the warm air is surging northward a little bit here and as we go further out in time the next day this is uh the, the 19th we got 62 in richmond believe it or not near 60 in, Wa in washington baltimore 50s into uh new york and philly a lot of 60s over the gulf coast and 50s in tennessee and kentucky so it, it's it, there's a mild surge coming up here on uh, the model data whether it get that warm that i don't know but we can see it 264 hours out now the pattern begins to shift again here comes our ridge beginning to push northward again shutting off the mild pacific air and allowing the cold air to come backwards here's a polar vortex very large and beginning with the cold air to come back in a little bit as we approach christmas this is the 21st and we can see that the temperatures are beginning to cool off a little bit on the 22nd. Still very warm west of the Mississippi River and over the Rockies, no doubt about that. Um, and then here are the temperatures, 850. Um, I'd, excuse me, too many temperatures. You can see the built up of really cold air along the U.S. Canada border. This is at the surface now. You can see temperature anomalies at, at the, uh, at the uh, surface. And we can see the cold air building right in here. So and the u.s is not as warm as it was from before as you go further out in time this is day 15 you can see a big strong ridge here on the west coast pushing back up again establishing the arctic flow there's your polar vortex the nao is still neutral at best but we're getting cold air in here now there might be some sort of disturbance on christmas eve in the southern jet stream that might have to be watched for something maybe i'm not very excited about it yet don't see a lot of promise for it and these are the temperatures on christmas look how cold it is the, the image on the left this is the um 850 temperatures you can see it right there 850 temperatures there and you can see very cold and then this is the ones for this these are surface temperatures here and again impressively cold east of the mississippi river for christmas day so christmas is going to be cold this the christmas weekend no doubt about that based upon this model data. Now, further out, let's look at the MJO. Here's the MJO. We'll point it out to you so you can see it. Right now, it is in phase seven. Phase seven here. There's phase eight and phase one. So where is it going to go? Well, if we look at the various models, here's the European model, and it wants to bring uh, the MJO into phase eight or one. Here, the European monthly model actually has it going back in neutral circle. The actual operational European does bring it to phase eight and then close to the neutral circle by Christmas Day. Well, what does that mean for the pattern? This is the uh, CFS actually has in seven and eight as well as we get towards Christmas. So what does that mean? Well, in uh, phase eight, when you have a La Nina, what you have is a nice general trough here uh, over the uh, West Coast and a cold trough there with a, not a lot of blocking up here a little bit, but not much. It's just a generally cold pattern. And then beyond that, in the phase um, one, it's uh, the pad begins to break down, actually. And the cold pattern begins to alleviate, and the uh, NEO goes a negative, excuse me, goes positive, and we're getting a bit of a ridge over the Gulf Coast. So the cold pattern begins to break down. Longer term, the uh, uh, Rossby wave model shows a continuation of impressively cold negative anomalies over uh, Canada, which would imply very cold temperatures over the east northern half of the country uh, during the last week of uh, December going into uh, New Year's. This is Meteorologist DT from weatherist.com. I'll see you on the website, on the podcast for snowstorms, and on the Facebook page.